Jealous! Jealous! Right where we left her. Hello, baby. Look at her, huh? How's it feel to be back, Kazza? Feels so good. I'm really excited to go upstairs and look. Let's go. Oh, she looks pretty good. Yeah, bro. Wow. How you like them apples? Yeah, she looks all right. Just like we left her, huh? Does she smell <laughs> good inside? Yes. Uh, just like home. It's like coming home, huh? Ah, it just smells like boat that's been stored, it's not yeah. too bad. Everything's all right. Let's open that bad boy up, huh? Oh, Welcome yeah. home, Kaza. Wow. We made it after four months, 120 days, <laughs> 10 or 12 airline flights. I don't know how many different countries. Yeah, I know. And what better way to sum up this four months of adventure than with a little montage? Hi, Mom. Well, I always cry when you keep here. <laughs> Good to see you. Oh. We try to make it back every few years. Really? Oh, that's my brother, Brett Troutman. Oh, hi. And when we do, we just want to do normal family stuff. Soccer Saturday. Soccer Saturday. Bad as it gets. <laughs> Brady and I were headed off to Mexico for a mini vacation with my parents, who were pretty excited to meet him for the first time. It had been over a year since seeing my family. So spending a couple of weeks doing a whole lot of nothing felt pretty amazing. And just like that, it was time to fly north and experience the land of fire and ice. Then it was time for a big reunion. <laughs> Kiro flew in from Vietnam. <laughs> And Lisa joined us from Austria. <laughs> and we couldn't fly halfway across the world without planning a little Patreon meetup. A lot of people coming. <laughs> it's so fun. A huge thanks to all of you for being there. It's hard to put into words how much love, inspiration and support you all give us. And then we got an invitation we just couldn't pass up. So we flew to Svalbard to meet up with the crew of 59 North Sailing for a month-long Arctic expedition. Welcome to Svalbard. Uh, that was probably the scariest landing I think I've ever had. Our time in Svalbard was a life-changing experience. The beauty of the rugged landscapes and rawness of nature affected us deeply. Cannonball! <laughs> oh, fuck that! We filmed so much that we decided to edit a completely separate series of videos dedicated solely to the expedition. So stay tuned. And then, instead of flying back to Sweden, Brian and I got a once in a lifetime opportunity to jump ship and sail across the Barents Sea. So we set off with the crew of Skydancer for another 760 miles of cold water sailing. The weather is absolutely incredible today. To a successful passage. For a great passage. <laughs> Scorch. Yeah. Jesus Christ. So now it was time to stay in one place for a bit. And I'm gonna show Brian what a Swedish summer is all about. Out bicycling! <laughs> Here's a little taste of Sweden and everything that we have done over the last couple of weeks. My favorite times like revolve around being able to have just time and, and space to be able to spread out and work. We've had time to exercise in the yard and uh, practice our slacklining. At your mom's house, it's so cool to be able to eat every meal outside. So we take like our little table and we set it out in the yard out in front of like the barn or the little house that we're sleeping at. And then we just eat and it's, it's so quiet. And one day, Brian dropped the big question. 
And I said yes. She said yes. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> and it was actually the first time mm -hmm. that we'd been together alone in what, like two years or something? Yeah, a long time. Lots of love, lots of happiness. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> we had a lot of adventures during these four months, but we also worked really hard, editing a total of 18 episodes and shot six terabytes of footage. And now it was time for our last flight back home to Delos. Oh man, I'm so stoked to be back. We just got him back to Delos. It feels really, really good. It's, it's like the closest I've felt to being home. You know, the whole time we were out visiting family and doing our adventures and stuff, people kept on asking, like, oh, you know, how is it to, to be home, like to be back in the US? And I kept thinking, man, I like it, but my home is, is here. My home is Delos. My home is on the ocean. I guess we were gone for almost like four months. Coming back to Grenada and knowing that we're not going to have to get on another plane for a long time feels really, really good. I'm so grateful to be able to travel and film and do what we do, but every time you're moving, not only your clothes, but camera gear and laptops, we're not on vacation, so we're working everywhere we are, and it, it just finding the balance in that has been really hard. So being back in Grenada is like, a little bit of like a, a relief off the shoulders. Being able to start working on the boat and get her ship shape and ready for another season of sailing is like super exciting. I think I'm even more excited than the first year that I started cruising because I know what to expect and I just I know just how good it's gonna be. She hasn't been hauled out in like five years almost. The last time was in Indonesia uh, or Malaysia I guess. I'm really excited to get into projects and I don't know just see some progress. I know that there's gonna be a lot of grinding in my future. Doing like manual labor is, is something that I really miss. It's hot and it's gonna be sweaty and dirty. And Kirill is here too so we're kind of five for a while at least. I feel super stoked, super ready to start working and yeah. It's gonna be an awesome season. So I guess that's the first task to figure out what we actually need to do. What are you gonna write there Kaza? To do. <laughs> <laughs> Got to repair the keels. We need to mount the paddle boards to the side. Put the solar panels back on and the wind generators. And we need to varnish the door and the trim around the door. And while we're doing that, we might as well do the table too. Yeah. Install a new uh, oven. Anchor. Oh yeah, anchor. I'd like to get a, a proper tow bar on the dinghy. Do we want to replace the traveler line with something smaller? Yes. Main traveler blocks. Main traveler blocks. Uh, what was it called with the cushions? Not pressure wash. What is it called? Steam clean? Steam clean. Dodger? Yeah. Um, yeah. We didn't get very far into our work, <laughs> did we? <laughs> the list. Okay, welcome to day one. Get Dallas back in the water supervision. The way this works is we're gonna have three columns of things. On the left, we're gonna have our to-do items, which we have the whole list here. And we're gonna prioritize those from like the most important up top to like the least important could be nice to do on the bottom. In the center will be in progress items. And then on the right will be completed items. Uh, recommission water maker, that can like happen virtually anytime. Uh, test salon hatch for leaks. That's probably pretty important uh, in case we need to order parts or something, right? So look at all this shit. Like Delos is always gets so incredibly messy before it gets clean, and especially when you're in working mode. We have a lot of stuff out. Look at this. Brady and Alex's cabin look like this. <laughs> and you should see mine and Brian. Look at the pasture. Yeah. So as you can see, it's not exactly livable right now. So I'm a very, very happy we don't have to stay on the boat when we're at the hard like this. So we have been staying with uh, two of our friends, Chris and Crystal, uh, in their house. And oh, Louis, our pet chicken. Look at you, it's raining so much. Oh, are you hungry? 
had our own little room. I guess I can show you the room. We had our own little situation, this side looks like. It's been a really, really good stay here. Brian is um, taking a shower. How is that morning shower, Brian? Uh, <laughs> it's a little bit of a challenge getting to the boat yard because we're on the other side of the island. So we're gonna try and grab either a taxi or one of the crazy local buses, whichever comes first. And it's a super cool system, so they don't really, they, I guess they kind of have set routes, they have no set schedules, but there's just a bunch of them. And they drive around and there's always a driver, and then there's always a conductor, and the conductor stops and like opens the door, takes people's money, like figures out where people are going and signals the driver when to stop and stuff. But all the vans are like tripped out and it's really cheap. It's 250 EC, which is like 90 US Was cents. Was that trip 250? Dollar. It was uh, 5 EC for both of us. Wow. Right? And then it just drops us off and then we're right here. <laughs> <laughs> I like those vans. Perfect. We removed the solar panels and wind generators just in case a storm rolled through. And before we could tackle our list of projects, we'd need power. Not only to run the grinders, sanders, and other tools, but most importantly, we need lots of, yup, ice. Yes. Pure gold, baby. Pure gold. So one of the first things that we have started with is uh, varnishing. We have only a few wooden things on the boat, but <laughs> just sitting in the sun for like four months and we have also haven't done it since like five years ago, I think. So we have sanded everything. So that's step number one, sanding. Step number two is cleaning off the wood with some thinner. You guys got like a little uh, varnishing shop set up. Yeah. <laughs> Someone's camera. <laughs> <laughs> it makes a good roof, doesn't it? I know, it's <laughs> a great little like wind tunnel. Yeah. <laughs> and taping, of course. And then varnishing. We're about done with varnishing. <laughs> we needed to do like uh, six layers. And yeah, this is the six layers, so we're done. Yay! Yay! Pretty shiny though. One of my projects for today is to try to get all the mold off our Dodger. We had this Dodger made about two years ago and it shouldn't go bad that fast, but for some reason, I don't know, it's just filled with mold and it's leaking like crazy. Got a little... Our Dodger is pretty dodgy at the moment. All this rainwater sitting up there, it sucks. Push it out like this. This umbrella in my butt. So I'm gonna try to clean it and then retreat it to bring back the waterproofness. We cleaned it yesterday and I think actually most of the mold went away, which is really exciting. Now me and Blue, we have set up everything to be sprayed. So we found this awesome catamaran from LTD Sailing. <laughs> because We're they're... both wearing LTD Sailing shirts. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Reppin'. So just because they are our friends, we figured it's okay for us to borrow underneath their catamaran. Read the instructions, Blue. Where do you want me to have directions? If surface to be waterproofed is dirty or stained, clean it, which we already did. Uh, dry it, which we already did. And then apply the waterproofing with the sprayer. Brush or sponge. Just don't let it drip and let it dry for six hours. So we're underneath this catamaran hidden away from the rain, so hopefully we'll be all right. a little bit more than six hours like seven hours or something like that and it seems really dry and it looks a lot cleaner than when we started so that's a good sign now we just have to put it up and do a test 
Well, there's a lot of projects going on. I just got the cushions back. We haven't steam cleaned our cushions uh, and the carpets since I did it in Australia. And that was like right as we started <laughs> this whole thing. So it has been a while, like five, six years or something. And they were getting quite mucky. So I decided that I'm gonna, oh, I'm not gonna steam clean them because I tried to rent the steam cleaner, but you can't do it in uh, Grenada. So I handed it in to a guy and he did all of it. They look awesome. Look at all of them though. Like the whole, I don't know how I'm gonna get him inside and the boat is so dirty. It costs a little bit of money about 300 US dollars but we have a lot of cushions so I feel like it was way worth the money to do it since we have so much other stuff going on but yeah the cushions are steam clean and it's smelling good now I just need to get him into the boat <laughs> it's so many wait I might set up a time lapse or something just me bringing it in We had a little minor setback yesterday when we were taking out the uh, bow thruster. There was a little bit of miscommunication and it sort of just fell out of the bottom of the boat. And smashed onto the ground and it cracked like uh, the bottom part where the propeller mounts. Fuck, I didn't know it was gonna go that <laughs> Yeah, it's okay though. Are you okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, is it okay? She <laughs> should imagine that fell off. I didn't think it was gonna come out like that. So what should have been like maybe a two or three hour project has turned into two or three days, as sometimes happens with boat work. Nice gear oil. There's no water in it, which means the seal is good. Classic bag from Mauritius, huh? Oh, it's so satisfying to get it off. Oh, I <laughs> see it. Up the seal. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah, it's like... Because it was probably spinning in there and melting, right? Is this like hard? It's yeah, a, it's like frozen melted plastic, huh? It's but we're getting it. We have some sanding to do on it, and then we're going to have to re-glass up the part where it cracked. <laughs> Ready to start laying up some epoxy and some glass to fix this damage. When it fell, it hit on this edge and it broke right there. And it also cracked here and we found another crack here. Yeah. So we're basically gonna give this a wipe down with some mineral spirits to get all the dust off. And then we're gonna mix a layer of epoxy and hardener. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut out a few strips of fiberglass cloth. And then we're gonna figure out a way to go like this right, yeah. and like this and what we do is we put a layer down of the epoxy first we put this over it yeah we get it adjusted and then we put another layer on top of that and then we have to let that cure well 10 minutes in roughly and uh, it's just hardened like all yeah. of a sudden and it went off and now we uh it turned into a block yeah, it turned into a hot even hot, though it's hot, the slow stuff so we're gonna get a bucket with ice to keep it cool. I learned this little trick from a bloke in Australia. If the epoxy is going off too quick, just chuck it in some ice to keep it cool. So I have the fairing compound on the bow thruster now and it uh, looks pretty good. And there, my next step is to sand it. So I'm just gonna sand the edges, start shaping it, make it nice and smooth and then we'll seal it with a layer of epoxy. We'll be almost there. So that's how a three-hour routine gear oil change can turn into a three-day boat project. <laughs> okay. Nice okay, you can leave it. 
My mission today is to finish servicing the propeller. Yesterday we were able to get it off okay. But... But today I am going to pull these seals out. These need to be replaced. I need to put a new bushing in there. And it's a bit of a trick to get these out. So what I've learned over the years is that actually uh, this is a dent puller that you'd use in like a auto body repair shop. So I drill a hole sort of in the seal right there. I screw this in there. And then I use the, the weight and I just go pop and it pops it out. This is the wearing bearing that needs to be replaced every time we haul out. So basically inside of it, there's a, an O-ring which seats on the shaft here. And then these oil seals seat on the outside. So this piece sort of keeps the salt water out and it keeps the oil in. And then I have three new seals. So I put one, two, and then the third one actually goes in that way to keep it. And that's what keeps this unit uh, full of oil. This is the old, old one. And what I actually do is I use to keep the old one, so then I use it to push the seals in. Because it's the I started out yesterday with a pretty minor project which I thought was to check a bonding strap on the air conditioning pump. But here's the other problem I found is that in South Africa, it looks like we got some counterfeit hose clamps. So, so this is supposed to be a 316 stainless steel hose clamp. That's been in there about a year. So you can tell that it is absolute bullshit. Broken half, which causes leaks, sucks. I bought these new ones. Hopefully these are better. These are made in England. They're about three US dollars a piece or four dollars, so hopefully they're the real deal. So this is kind of what we're talking about here is these guys like that has just corroded. There's no reason why they should corrode and leave rust. All of these, so I've got to go through, replace them all. It's just a lot of unnecessary work because we got shitty parts. But hopefully this time they'll last, this should last a long time. My main focus today is the keel. So there's those places where, uh, I don't know if we've probably hit a number of things over the years. And oh! There's bottom right there. And it's gone through the glass and now the, the keel is exposed. The problem with the keel is these rust spots. If you can see that, that, uh, like that needs to be ground away. The plan is I have to literally grind all the uh, paint gel coats uh, through the glass layer and down to the iron itself. Uh, which is quite a bit of work. I'm using a three and a half inch angle grinder. And then I will need to basically use an acid to get rid of all the rust. And then I'll use this rust dissolver gel, which is actually some really nasty stuff. It's phosphoric acid with some other things, really nasty, but it actually converts the rust into a protective layer. And then I'll wipe that off and right away before it starts to rust again, I will uh, put a layer of epoxy on this to protect it. And that done and I've got the acid all wiped off. I've got to put a coat of epoxy on there like right away to seal it up. Next it was time to start building layers up again to form a protective layer over the keel. 
We did this by mixing normal epoxy with a silicon-based filler that can then be spread. It forms a thick, goopy mixture that can be fared smooth by sanding. How's it going, girl? Woo! It's good, guys. <laughs> yeah. My arms are getting a good workout over here. But it's looking nice. We're getting it really good. Mm. Um, yeah. <laughs> the sanding's complete. We've sanded with like the sander and by hand sanding. And now there's like these little divots in the filler that we're gonna fill in with more filler and then sand it again. Needs more, needs more, needs more. The idea is to apply layers of filler with sanding in between to eventually get a smoothly fared surface. Smooth as a baby's butt. <laughs> We then seal the filler with a final layer of epoxy. This is it, guys. This is the last epoxy layer, huh? Yeah. Oh, shit. Low battery. <laughs> epoxy by phone lights. It's going to die at any moment. Look how smooth that is. Smooth and shiny. Somebody moved my... Sticky notes. I took away your satisfaction. It's like the best part. Here, get, get back on the best part of the whole thing. Here you go. Yeah, I did some of those. Yeah, we're gonna move them together. Okay. Yes. Ooh. Ooh. We're getting there. We're getting close. Mm -hmm. So we should only have a few more days left in the marina, which is super exciting <laughs> if everything goes to plan. <laughs> it's, been, it's been a really good month of working and editing and it's been quite exhausting at times, but we're on the final stretch and the last things to do on the bottom are going to happen in the next couple days and it feels really good to be in the home stretch to move back home onto Delos and to start the new season. It's really exciting. It's time. It's definitely time. I put together this cool spreadsheet of these numbers to talk about some of the costs from the time we came out of the water until we did the first, uh, basically the first month of labor on the boat. In US dollars, the haul out uh, cost $346. The pressure wash where they clean the bottom was $92. The chalking was where they set up the mounts on the side of Delos was $80. To set up the hurricane cradle, they charged $158. And in miscellaneous supplies at Budget Marine, like epoxies, uh, brushes, uh, coveralls, paint, disposable gloves, uh, mixing stuff, varnish, that came up to 808 US dollars in just like random materials. The monthly storage to keep Delos in the hard for a total of five months, uh, $635 per month. And then for that same period of time for the hurricane cradle, that was $1,467. But the main place that we saved a lot of money was in our own labor. So over the period of that time, we tracked our hours and we worked uh, about a month solid and for most of that time there was five of us working so me Brady Alex Kirill and Kaza all busting our butts like even sometimes on weekends 835 hours of labor and the rate that the yard charges for average labor is 81 EC per hour uh, I think sometimes for specialty things they might charge a little bit more but that's maybe a good average rate so in total, we saved $25,000 US in labor by doing the work ourselves. And we know that it's done 100% right. That's a lot of labor, bro. Yep, pretty cool. Uh, so the total project cost for the, the work that we showed in this video would be 31,182 US dollars. But because we did all of the work ourselves, we spent $6,132. Not bad, huh? Woo. A lot of work, man. Yeah, a lot of work, uh, but very good, very fulfilling. And in the next video, we're going to be showing the next part of the process, which is 
the doing of the bottom. So sandblasting, priming it, and then putting on our new experimental bottom paint. So check that out next week. Let's do it. See ya. Let it do its thing. Hey, hold on, this is getting on you. Okay. Mm. <laughs> Can I say something? No, I don't want to say anything. You. Hey. What? Just put a GoPro up my nose. Just get it in there. Somebody has to edit that. So, <laughs> you know how me shitty you. it is to watch through footage like that. No. I don't mind. <laughs> so it could be on a thousand ways to die or something. Business in the front, party in the back. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> like it? I like it a lot.